In this tutorial, we're going to look at Lindenmeyer systems. So we'll be covering the basics of symbols, rules, and axioms, the ELF lookup object, and the methods get L sequence, do simple lookup, and do lookup with the Fibonacci transitions. L systems, or Lindenmeyer systems, were developed in 1968 by the Hungarian botanist Aristide Lindenmeyer. And he was originally interested in using these to model growth processes of plant development, but they can also be used to generate self-similar fractals. L systems consist of symbols used to make strings and rules to expand each symbol into longer strings of symbols. They usually include an initial axiom or string from which to begin and are followed by a loop or a rewriting process which applies the rules to each symbol of a new longer string at each pass and it's this process that produces self-similarity. So a simple example would be using symbols A and B, as you can see on your screen here, and the rules A returns AB and B returns A. Giving a starting axiom or seed of A, we produce the following in each pass from 0 to 7. L systems are very often used in the world of graphics and fractals and in particular what we call turtle graphics. These use symbols in resulting lists which mean draw a line or do nothing. And they also add non-transforming symbols or constants that mean turn by angle n or begin branch, etc. So if we start to look at these examples and how they manifest themselves in graphics, we can use the symbols a and b, both of which would mean draw forward. If we add the constant plus and minus, where plus means turn left by an angle, perhaps 60 degrees, and minus means turn right by an angle, given the rules A returns B minus A minus B, and B returns A plus B plus A, an angle of 60 degrees and an axiom of A, we get what's called the Sierpinski triangle, which you can now see on your screen. Further examples of L systems which use branching can result in graphics like you see on your screen now, which starts to resemble a plant, something like a sheaf of wheat. So how do L systems work in Slippery Chicken? What we do here is create self-similar lists based on elements, rules, and an axiom. In Slippery Chicken, there are no constants. We generate a sequence of key references from rules. And we extend the L system idea to allow the binding of L system results to other groups of data which may be cycled through and transitioned across as the algorithm unfolds. That means we use the results as keys to look up data from association lists. Hence this class in Slippery Chicken is called L for lookup. First of all, we would create an L for lookup object by calling the make L for lookup function. This requires a list of elements, which is the keys with their data, and a list of rules based on the keys of the elements. So for example, if we wanted to create an L for lookup object based on the rules A returns AB and B returns A, we'd have to program it as follows. What we see here is a call to make L for lookup with an argument of a symbol, just to give it a name, Lsys, and then we have the list of elements, these are the keys with the data that they're going to return. And these can be quite complex, but in this case, it's just a simple A when we see 1 or B when we see 2. The third argument is the set of rules. What we see here is 1 returns 1, 2, and 2 returns 1. So this corresponds in the simpler ca simplest case to A returns A, B, and B returns A. So how do we use this object? We can call several methods here. The simplest method would be get L sequence, and this doesn't actually require the lookup elements that we've just described. What we do need is the L for lookup object, an axiom to start with, and the length of the list to return. So for instance, given this make L for lookup object, if we call get L sequence using that object, starting with the axiom 1 and asking for 29 results, we get the following list returned. And you can see here that we're just returning the L sequence, not using the lookup portion where we use A and B to substitute for 1 and 2. 
The second method would return data associated with the keys, and this is do simple lookup. The arguments we would need here are the alpha lookup object to access, the starting axiom, and the length of the list to return. So you can see here we have our now familiar alpha lookup object and a call to do simple lookup using that object, starting with an axiom of 1 and requiring 29 results to be returned. So here now you can see that the 1s and 2s have been substituted into A's and B's. Notice also that we're calling the flatten function, which is quite useful for taking any list that consists of sublists and making them all into a simple list. So now let's look at how we combine L systems with Fibonacci based transitions. This uses the do lookup method. For this to work, the data of at least one element must be a sublist for transitions to be evident. For example, to gradually replace A with C, we would need elements that look like this. 1 returns A at the beginning of the algorithm and C at the end of the algorithm. 2 always returns B. So if we call do lookup with our alpha lookup object a starting axiom of 1 and a required list of 73 elements returned, we get the following. So you can see at the beginning, we've got a bunch of A's and B's, A's and B's, etc. But slowly as we go along, those A's start to be replaced by C. So at the end, you can only see C's and B's. Now the reason that the A, the C, and the B are represented in sublists is because they could actually contain several elements and they would be cycled through each time that sublist is called. So things can actually get quite complicated and musically interesting here. There's also another method that we can use with L systems here, and that's get linear sequence. No rules are actually necessary here, because what we do is create a list by collecting the next element from the data each time. That means that when the last data element is collected, we return to the head of the data list. But we use the data element collected as a key for the next collection, so that all data elements must also be keys. So if you look at our next example, we can see a make L for lockup with no rules, because all we're interested in is the linear sequence. So we define our data here to be 1, 2, and 3, which returns the following cyclical lists, 2 and 3 for 1, 3, then 1, then 2 for 2, and always 1 for 3. So if we call get linear sequence with that lookup object, starting with the axiom 1 and returning 23 results, first of all, we turn 1, which we then use to look up and return 2. Now that is then used as a key to look up into the two list, the first element of which is three. Then that three is used to look up in our lists, and that always returns one. Now we've already seen one at the beginning. It returned two that time, so this time it's going to have to return three. Three returns one as it always does, and one this time goes back to the head of the list and returns two. Two, first of all, returned three, so next it returns one etc, etc. We can make a very simple example piece here using do simple lookup to make our rhythm sequence and set maps. What we have here is a piece using just two sets in its palette and two rhythm sequences in its rhythm sequence palette. And we have a make alpha lookup object with just some simple rules and those were tools returning a lookup of A and B for the values 1 and 2. We call the do simple lookup function to make a Lindemeyer system that goes between 1 and 2 for the required number of bars, which we specify here to be 37. So when it comes to creating the rhythm seek map and the set map, you can see that we just use that LSIS list to choose those sets and rhythm sequences. And you can see and hear what that results in.